Right, we're going to look at an alternative to the traditional whirly bird, the um, spin away, and how the whirly birds can be installed. We've looked at the uh, limitations of the whirly bird and how ventilation is achieved using whirly bird. So, is there an alternative? So, what we're going to look at now is an, an Aussie invention. Um, quite a few years back, a guy in Canberra invented an alternative to the whirly bird. And what is it? It's called a roof tile ventilator. And basically, it replaces a tile. So, this is kind of what it looks like. Fairly simple construction in the vent and this is where the air goes into the roof cavity. And the idea is that you would take the tile out and, and this goes in there, fits in where the tile is and you can paint it in any colour you like and the idea is that the air goes in there uh, so it's either air in or air out, depending on where on the roof it is. So once you've got this in, and the and it only works if the roof is sarked, you'll notice where that's the outlet. So what you need to do is you actually need to cut. an inlet into the attic area and so now you've got a hole and air will, the cooler air will come in, come out through this hole and then imagine that there's a tile sitting right there Can help you. Sean, uh, you from Universal Tile Ventilators, are you? Yes, we are, mate. How okay, are you? yeah. I was wondering who Canberra Web was. Uh, it's my name's Jack. I'm bringing from the roofing portal here in Sydney. Yeah. Uh, I um, have a client who wants to vent their concrete tile roof, and I suggested to them that we could use Universal Tile Ventilators rather than whirly birds. Uh, and we've, we've put these things in before many, many years ago and I'm just trying to figure out, uh, you've gone through a few changes, are you still making these things? Yeah, mate. Okay, so we can get them out of Canberra, you you, you got the yep. shop in yep. Canberra? Yeah, 100%. Okay, alright. So he's got, I think, the uh, the money at Cambridge, uh, flat yep. profile one, so you, you, could, uh, you could do uh, uh, your ventilators in that profile? Yeah, we fit one here. Yeah. yeah, okay, no problems. Okay, that's good, because I'm just wondering, I, I, um, I'm just doing a search and um, there's nowhere where I can buy it, and I only got your website, so I thought I'd give you a ring uh, just to make sure that uh, I can still get it. Yeah, mate, yeah, not a problem at all. Yeah, we've definitely got them, and there's no issues whatsoever. Right, so we're having a closer look at this. So, the car sits over the top. And so that's where air goes in or out depending on where the ventilator is. So if it's down near the gutter, the cool air comes in through this hole and goes into the cavity. If it's near the ridge, then the warm air will come out through the hole out there and then come out via the exhaust. So this is how the roof tile ventilator works. If you've got a terracotta tile roof, this is size for a, a normal terracotta tile. If you've got a concrete tile roof, concrete tiles, what you have is a similar tile because concrete tiles are wider, so they've made it to suit the concrete tile and it goes in kind of the same way. Now, one of the critical elements of venting a roof is the size of the inlet. So for a terracotta tile roof, you are looking at roughly 170 wide 
and looking at 35 deep. So that's the cross-sectional area of the inlet. For a concrete tile, we're looking at about 255 and about 26 millimeters deep. And you think that the cross-sectional area of that and that is roughly about the same. And it, and it works out to about 6,000 to 6,500 square millimetres. And that's quite an important figure to keep in mind because later on we'll look at what the code requires in terms of the minimum area of ventilation that's required for a particular size of roof. So we've got a roof tile ventilator for tile roofs you would ask, you know, what about metal roofs? And the answer is that they are making ventilators to suit a corrugated roof, and they can also make ventilators to suit different profiles as a custom ventilator. So potentially, this may be the choice for roof ventilation to comply with the latest in the National Construction Code ventilation requirements. We shall see. Okay. Um, yeah, basically Kevin was my friend. He was owned the business, yes. he's the inventor, and he died. But um, he gave me the business a few years before he passed away. Right. And mentored me ever since. And then, um, yeah, then I've, I've just added to it. And obviously because they had no money, mm. um, I obviously had to buy lots of stock because they didn't have any We've got right. four or five hundred events stock at the moment. So we've got plenty to help you out with. Oh, mate. Well, the great thing, the thing about the whirly birds, all they are is a, a hole in your roof. People think the uh, fan spins and centrifugally sucks, but it doesn't. Um, but the great thing is if you had a roof which had whirly birds on it and they wanted to simply um, add more, like add incoming air, we can go above the insulation line of you know, our vents around the perimeter. Yep. And that'll make those whirly birds work like a beast. Yeah, so uh, so <laughs> so it's going to be like a hybrid. Uh, the instead yeah. of ease vents, we put in your ventilators, and then the world oh, yeah. will can stay there. Yeah, that's it. And in that respect, simply put them all around the perimeter, yep. and you get really good cross ventilation channels everywhere. All right, okay. So there we are, uh, the ins and outs of the Aussie roof tile ventilator. And whilst it's quite sad that the Aussie inventor died prematurely, it's great to know that there is someone out there who's taken on his invention and continuing a little bit of that legend. But the question is, will this particular ventilator be the whirly bird killer? And I think you might have heard me before, in life there are no perfect solutions, there are only trade-offs. And the problem with these ventilators is the opening size. It is just not big enough. And if you look at the opening size, the cross-sectional area of one of these ventilators, it's round about 7,000 square millimeters. And compare that to a 300 millimeter diameter whirly bird, which is about 70,000, it's like it's 10 times. So you need 10 of these to be the equivalent of one single whirly bird. And now the next question is, to comply to the latest National Construction Code, how many of these ventilators do we actually need? And to find out, there's the famous table 10.8.3, which tells us how much cross-sectional area you need on the inlets and how much in the outlets for different slopes of roofs. So for an average roof, how many whirly birds or these ventilators do we actually need? Now, the table specifies a cross-sectional area per meter of roofs. And let's have a look at the new roofs that have been put up nowadays in Sydney. We'll go to a typical new suburb like Marsden Park, which is in Western Sydney. And Google Earth is a wonderful tool. It allows you to dive straight in, look at these houses, get a street view, and you can even see some of these houses with whirly birds on it, singular whirly birds. But if you have a close look, you can't see any eaves fence.
The other thing you should notice is that these are brand new houses being built in 2023 or 2024. And the National Construction Code for Ventilation came into effect in May 2023. So quite likely a lot of these houses don't comply. So let's have a look at these houses and Google allows you to take a measurement. And the average house length is about 12 to 15, 18 meters. So if you take the average length of a typical new house as 15 meters, and knowing that we need 7,000 square millimeters per meter, that works out to, if you've got 10 meters, that's 70,000, which is the equivalent of one whirlybird. So 15 meters, you need one and a half whirlybirds. So amazingly, one and a half whirlybirds is enough to provide the requirements for ventilation to comply with the code. The catch is always the inlet. You can put in, say, two whirlybirds for the average house, but you've got to provide the inlets. And if there are no inlets, then the whole thing doesn't make sense. Now the code gets more complicated because as the roof pitch goes down, you actually need more ventilation. And a low pitch roof is typically a metal roof. And while some metal roofs do have eaves in them and you can actually put eaves in, a lot of metal roofs are bounded by a box cutter and a barge flashing. And you can't put a hole behind a box cutter because that will then defeat the purpose of the box cutter. So it'll become a very difficult exercise to be able to put an inlet and an outlet on a flat low profile metal roof. Now the challenge now is for some Aussie inventor out there to come out with something that works. And there's a demand because the National Construction Code is put in the requirements that's brought in this demand. Now it's up to some smart cookie out there in Australia to figure out how we can comply with the ventilation codes with both pitch roofs and low pitch roofs. So the challenge is on, guys. What do you think and what can you come up with?